So this is a brief overview of sequences in order to prepare you for learning about compound types. So if I set a variable a equal to cat, for example, as a string, a string is actually a sequence. So strings are sequences of characters. In the virtual computer world, how we drew this out in the previous lessons was we had a variable a and then we mapped this to a sequence of characters. So I had c, a, and t. So some people actually consider strings to be a compound type because it's comprised of characters. Let's start with strings and then generalize. Something that you can do in Python is you can index a sequence. So what that means is if I have this a, I can actually say, hey, give me the nth number in this sequence. So if I say a one, what this is going to do, it's going to return the character at index one. Okay. And so you might think that this gives you back C because it's the first thing, right? But Python does this differently. So actually Python, how you would index these is the indices start at zero. So this here is actually zero, one, and two, which means that if I come here, a of one, I am taking the item at position index one, which so happens to be A in this case. Now, if I had asked for, for example, A at index two, then this would give me T. And remember that I can change this variable name to whatever I want, right? So I could, I could have also said this is var, and this could have been the name over here. So then var one and var two. Okay. This concept of stuff starting at zero, this is known as zero indexing. In addition, you can also start from the end. So actually we could also make this the negative one index, the negative second index and the negative third index. Okay, so similarly, if I had asked for var of negative one, this would also give me t because I go to index negative one and then I say, okay, what is, what is the thing inside the box at index negative one? So this is called indexing. We can basically extract certain pieces of a sequence. The cool thing about indices is that it doesn't just have to be a single index, you can actually take a slice of indices. So let me change this to a slightly longer uh, string and let's call this cat, how about cater? Okay, a little bit longer. So the next thing here is E and then R. And that means that we would change our indices. So let's erase these annotations. The indices here would be negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, or one, two, zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, so these two, these two here stay the same, but this one down here, instead of T, we go to negative one and that's now R. Okay, so then we can also slice. So if I wanted to only get the middle three, then what I could do is say var from, okay, the first thing that we want. So what's the first character? It's this A at position one. So I'm gonna go from position one and then this colon denotes until. So until, and actually we go until the thing that we don't want. So here we go until four. And now this will give us eight as a string. Okay, because what we're doing is saying, 
what I how I like to describe this is these here. These are the left hand sides. I like to say, okay, go on to your little drawing and find the two indices and go to the left. Take the boundary at the left hand side of that, which would be the one here and the one here, right? Because we're going to the left. Okay. So now these are our two boundaries, and then you just take everything that's inside of these boundaries for your result. All right, which means if I did something like the variable, let's say two to three, what would that be? It's a little bit of a tricky question, but for this one, we would again go to the left of two, and to the left of three, okay? And so what this one actually ends up being is just T, because that's what's in between these two. We can also take the negative indices, that's okay too. So if I did variable um, one until negative one, this is actually equivalent of this over here because the negative first and the fourth in this specific case are the same box. So this down here would actually also be eight. And you can also leave off. So if you don't, if you wanna start from the beginning, then you can actually say var and just leave the first thing blank and just go a semicolon to three. And what that does is it says, okay, get find three and take everything to the left of that. So this would return cat. Now, if I wanted to go from some index to the, to the very end of the string, I could say, just leave off the ending. So this would say, this one here, let's erase this to make some more space. So it would say, okay, two, let's find two. We're gonna go to the left of this two. And then the semicolon, without anything else means, okay, let's go to the very end. So this would be T-E-R. Now, finally, for sequences, we can also iterate over the sequences. So sequences are iterable. In the context of strings, let's say that we have, let me paste this below. So let's say that we have the same example with cater, okay? What we can actually do is we can say, okay, for each letter in this variable, we can do something with that. All right, what this chunk of code here is saying is we can actually go through this item box by box and get our code to do something with that letter every single time. So instead of do something, I will say, okay, let's print the letter. All right, and let's say the output box is down here. So what this is doing is saying, okay, find var. Okay, this is var. Var is iterable because I see the boxes. So with var, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each of these boxes in var and I'm going to call each of these letter every single time I go through a box. So on the first iteration, this letter is C. So in our first iteration here, what we're doing is we print that letter. So our output, we would be printing C. Actually, when you print the output, if you print a string, there's no uh, quotations. So it's just C. Now it asks, okay, is there anything else under that line? No. Hmm, okay, so can I move this letter? So can I move this letter over? And the answer is yes, because we're not at the end of our sequence. So what I'm going to do is just slide it over. So now on the second iteration, we do the same thing. We're going to print letter, which is now A. Do we have anything else? No. So we slide this over again because we can. So now I print T. 
and I slide this over again and I print E and I slide this over again and I print R so that's this line and now it says okay there's nothing else here we want to move this letter over but hey we're at the end now there's nowhere else to move this letter which means actually now we're done with this loop so this entire chunk of code well we're done with that now okay so now we move on to whatever the rest of our script is that's a sequence so for example if i had print done at the very end outside of the indentation then at the very end we would print done and sorry i didn't mean to squeeze that in there but at the end we would print done we're going to cover this concept called looping later on but i just want you to know that these are properties of sequences we can actually go through the sequence and we can extract certain values from the sequence or we can iterate through a sequence. We can go through all the items in the boxes one by one. Let's demonstrate this on the computer so that you guys know that this is actually Python and not just me writing down random stuff on the iPad. So right now I'm just using Replit. You can check it out in the description below. So the first thing that we did was var equals cater, right? So if I try to look at what var is, it's this string cater. And now I want to index, oops, I want to index the item at, at index one of, of this variable. So we're expecting this to be A from our notes, and it is. And if I go to two, it's T. If I take negative two, think about what this is. I'll let you take a moment. And if you said it was E, you're right. That's because remember, this is negative one, this is negative two. So negative two is E. Now we could also slice. So if I take var one to four, for example, then we get ATE because remember we're going from the left-hand side. So zero, one. So we go from the left of A to the left of zero, one, two, three, four, R. So this would be everything in between, which is A, T, E. And we can do, you know, a one-sided index. That's okay. And finally, we did a little bit of iteration. So here, I'm actually going to run this script. So I'm gonna set var equal to cater in the script, and then I'm gonna say, for each letter in this variable var, I'm going to print that letter. And then at the very end, I'm going to print done, right? So this should be exactly what we saw. I'm going to run this. And you'll see that we get C-A-T-E-R on separate lines, which means that it's printing five different times. And then it comes over here and prints done. So basically what we're doing is going through C, printing that letter, going to A, printing that letter, T, printing the letter E, R, etc., until we don't have any more letters to go through. And then at the very end, we print done.